This is problem 5-39, it's on page 231. Spring CD remains in the horizontal position at all times due to the roller at D. If the spring is unstretched when theta equals zero degrees and the stiffness is K equals 1.5 kilonewtons per meter, determine the smallest angle theta for equilibrium and the horizontal and vertical components of reaction at pin A. So pin A is the pivot point uh, at the bottom of this uh, pivoting body. So basically the way it looks is we've got a body something like that. There's a pin and slot up here. And that's long enough so that a spring can move up and down in the slot. And so the spring's always horizontal. And then the pivoting body is pivoted at a point called A. And it's got an interesting shape. It's almost like a triangle, something like this. So this is all one body, you see. And it's not ground, so I really shouldn't put crosshatch on it. Maybe uh, something more like this. There we go. Anyway, there's a force out at the end of 300 newtons, and it always acts vertically downward. And here's the spring where they told us the spring constant is one and a half kilonewtons per meter. Now, beyond that, this is point C, and it's pivoted. The spring is pivoted there as well. This is point B over here. Uh, the distance between C and B is 0 0.45 meters, and the length along this backside is 0 0.6 meters. And the angle theta is the angle that this makes. So basically, when AC is vertical, the spring has no tension in it. So mathematically, force in the spring equals 0 at theta equal to 0 degrees. So we're supposed to find the minimum angle of theta for equilibrium. So let me draw a free body diagram and uh, set a coordinate system, something like this. And uh, let's see, the free body diagram, I'm going to take that triangular shaped body, whatever it is. And since this is a pivoting pendant A, I'll write a Y, a X, and then F here, now this is 300 newtons, but I'm not going to write that. Uh, and then force in the spring to the left. And then just for some geometry, let's note that angle is theta. And by the way, so is this angle. Because think about it, this is a right angle here. And so if this was vertical, then its top piece would be horizontal and its side would be vertical. And as it rotates, of course, then the angle theta is simply measured from vertical and horizontal. So, let's see. Well, I have to somehow deal with this spring, so let me extract the triangle. I drew this at quite an angle. It might be a happy accident, actually. There we go. So this is point A, this is point C, and here's the angle theta. This side is an important length because it represents how far the spring is stretched. So notice it will always be 0 0.6 meters because that's the length of this side, multiplied by the sine of theta. You see, it's the upper side of the triangle. Now, the force in the spring, which is something important as well, will always be k delta x. And so the force in the spring can always be written as k times 0 0.6 meters sine of theta. And that's a little more convenient to write because we know k is 1.5 kilonewtons per meter. So if we multiply 1.5 by 0.6, we can just put it all together, and this comes out to 0.9 kilonewtons multiplied by sine theta. That makes our life a little bit easier uh, later in the problem. So what I'm going to do is some moments about A, because I'd like to know the force in the spring from the beginning. Counterclockwise is positive. Some better come out to zero. And so Fs, the force in the spring, has a moment arm of 0.6 multiplied by cosine theta. So Fs, I know I can write it this way, but let me just use Fs for the time being. 0 0.6 meters cosine theta would be the moment arm of the force in the spring. And then if we subtract the moment caused by this 300 Newton force, well, let's see, we're going to need the moment arm for that. So we can get part of it by taking this upper length, right? But then there's another triangle. Can you see it right here? Okay. Uh, better yet, really those two points are the same point because this force F is applied out at the end of the triangle. So 
Basically what I need is this length plus the length of the spring, see, for the moment arm of this force F. So minus F times, we'll get, again, the length of the spring first because we need that piece. So 0 0.6 meters cosine theta plus the length of this side. So this side would be, let's see, the 0.45 meter length because that's the distance between C, C, B. 0.45 multiplied by the cosine of theta to get the distance there. So 0 0.45 meters cosine theta. Okay. And that's it. Those are the only things that cause a moment about A. So now let's replace Fs with the equation that I have, 0.9 or the equality, the same thing, sine theta multiplied by 0 0.6 meters cosine theta. And let's put this term on the other side. So equals F times 0 0.6 meters plus 0 0.45 meters cosine theta. Let's see, did I make a mistake? Looks like I may have. Yeah, I used um, cosine and I should have used sine because this length is not the cosine side. This is the cosine side. I should have used sine. Sorry about that. So that means I can't factor this out. I hate just writing down everything from my notes. I like to think through it as I go and so I tend to not just copy my notes. <laughs> I'm trying to explain it as I go. Now, looking at this, what I did is I said, you know, I'd like to kind of get the constants together. So I just divided both sides by 0 0.9 times 0 0.6. And of course, those are kilonewtons and meters. So the, the, it doesn't really matter. We know that this is 300 newtons, but I'm working in kilonewtons, so I've got to be careful. So this is 0 0.3 kilonewtons. So that's the way I plugged it in. And I, I put everything together so that I was left with sine theta, cosine theta on one side. And on the other side, divided by 0.9 and 0.6. Uh, and of course, multiplying through the 0.3, what I found is that this was 0 0.18 sine theta plus 0 0.135 cosine. Now, looking at this, I didn't know exactly how to solve it. You might be able to square an add or something. I don't know. I, I don't think so. Um, so what I decided to do... Oh, that's not right. I'm sorry. I've skipped a few lines in my notes. I actually ended up here. Uh, this time, th these, the product of these two is 0.54, and so uh, what I had was 0.18, uh, which I had to divide by 0.54, and 0.135, which I had to divide by 0.54. But that, that's just math. That's not a big deal. So what I decided to do is go into Excel, and I plotted, I don't think we need this anymore. I plotted, um, what I did is I plotted this. I just moved sine theta, cosine theta to the other side. And basically, I just plotted this whole thing as a function of theta. So I had theta in one column, and, and this whole mess, this whole function in the other column, f of theta, let's call it. And I plotted it between 0 degrees all the way down to 90 degrees. Now, what you've got to understand is, when this is equal to 1, we have equilibrium. And so I was just looking for values of theta that would make this right-hand side equal to 1. Along the way, uh, there were only two numbers. One of the numbers was about 23.08 degrees, and the other one was 62.32, well, let's say 275, really. But anyway, decimal places don't really matter. So they wanted the smallest angle, and that's this 23 degree angle. So that's the one I went with. So now we know the angle theta. They asked what it was. Theta equals about 23.08 degrees. And so now we can sum forces in the y direction, for example, and get Ay minus uh, 300 newtons equals zero. And so obviously Ay equals 300 newtons. That was an easy one. And 
opportunity to put those down here. Intended for that to be a box too. That's better. So AY, it makes sense that that's, you know, F and AY are equal and opposite. And then AX, that should be AX, it looks like an AY. So summing forces in the horizontal direction, I got AX minus the spring force equals zero because those are the only horizontal forces. So as long as I know the spring force, I can calculate AX. And now that I know the angle theta, I can actually calculate the force in the spring. Remember it was 0 0.9 kilonewtons times sine of theta. But theta is of course 23.08 degrees or so. And so I got AX equal to about 352.8 newtons. Now I know I've got kilonewtons here. It was really 0 0.3528 newton, uh, kilonewtons, but I changed that to newtons when I wrote down my result. All you got to do is move the decimal place three over, and that's kilonewtons, or the, the prefixes, kilo, mega, giga, etc., are really easy. Once you realize it's just moving the decimal place three over, and you just have to remember which way to move it.